Hey, what's up YouTube? DW Blue Videos back with another video. And I want to say happy holidays and Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah to everybody out there who subscribes and likes my channel. And thank you to any other new subscribers that had uh, come about. <clears throat> and I'm sorry I haven't been on for a long time, but uh, unfortunately I've been a very, very busy person. All right, so what you see here is my Red Cat Volcano 16. Yes, I just picked one of these up here uh, not too long ago, and I did drive it around here. As you can see, the tires are a little bit dirty and whatnot. Um, and on the 390 size motor that it does have, it's actually not too bad. It's not terribly fast, but it, it, it's, it makes it fun to play with. I'll give it that. Now... Uh, there's plenty of other YouTube videos about unboxings and various things. I'll cover that really, really fast. So, first things first, the transmitter. Let me slide him out of the way. The transmitter is a very plain Jane, basic, two-in-one uh, setup transmitter. Has a third channel button, doesn't do anything. Um as your steering trim and your speed switch is where you can actually slow the vehicle down for beginner drivers a steering reverse function obviously on and off and in the steering wheel it's a very very cheap lightweight radio takes two double a batteries and that's pretty much it it does the job for for a ninety dollar rc hundred dollar rc <clears throat> all right I picked these up for the $90 special that uh, Red Cat was using. But anyway, I upgraded this guy. And I will go over all the upgrades with you. And I made it brushless. That's right. I did make it brushless. <clears throat> now, the downside to this vehicle is that it uses a five-wire servo, which is basically the electronic components other than the servo motor and the pot, um, are located in the 2-in-1 ESC receiver. I managed to find a workaround for that. Um, and I'll show you here in just a minute. But uh, one thing I noticed that a lot of people were commenting on is about the Red Cat uh, sticker here on the tire. The wheels do not come with these right off the gate they come on the decal sheet that you use to sticker up the body such as the sticker here there there the tail lights here or the the headlights here and whatnot uh, the body is painted or pretty screen printed uh, you know you get them in blue or red with the racing stripes uh, the window masks are already applied so yeah so the stickers come in the kit. So if you really like these like I do, don't worry when you get it. They come in the kit. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and pull the body off and we'll show you what we did to go brushless. And it indeed works. Uh, so here we go. Now I'll remind you, before I pull the body off, I do have to do my, some tidying up on my wiring so it's not a big deal. I'll, I'll get to it. So here we go. There you go. <clears throat> I'll cover the bases with you on how this is done. All right, first things first, I put in a Spectrum SR2100 micro race two channel or three channel receiver. It's the only Spectrum I had available at my disposal at the moment. So that's what I put in it. Now what you see here, is a dynamite let me flip it around <clears throat> dynamite 6000 kv uh, this is the speed control and esc combined unit um, <clears throat> now what it, i chose that because i wanted a cleaner install over in the es or the receiver department if I would have went with a separate ESC, I would have to have put the receiver probably somewhere on the top here and, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, as you can tell, there's the battery. There's the connector for the battery. 
Now, this is where you run into the issues with the servo, the stock five wire servo, is that the stock five wire servo is an oddball size. It's like uh, 28 by 27 by uh, 12 mil thick or something. <clears throat> so what I did, and I hated to do this to this servo because this servo is expensive. I, I mean, it's, it's way, way expensive. But it was the only thing I could find that I could use as a workaround for trying to get my hands on an additional three-wire servo. And that's got to come directly from China. What I used, and I'll turn it and I'll show you, is the Savox, if it'll focus. Well, it's not going to focus very well. It's the SW1250NG. Yes, it's the expensive one. I know, right? Now, what I had to do is I had to chop the ears off the servo. I had to use a Dremel tool to chop the ears. When you remove this Y-shaped piece, you will have to work, do a little sanding with, you know, like a you know, cut-off wheel, sanding drum uh, to get this thing to fit. There's two little nubs in the chassis, uh, one over here and one over here. When you pull the servo out, you'll see them. I had to take just a little bit of material off so the servo fits in there real snug. It does fit between these posts. It's a little snug, but it fits. And uh, as to the stock servo, you're not going to be able to use the original servo saver. Um, I also looked into the Taraxis servo saver for the, um, like their shifting linkages for like their summit. Uh, they've got a little servo, spring loaded servo saver mechanism. And I tried, I bought one of those just to try it. And it, it, it sticks forward too far. And it does hit the chassis when it, when it steers to the, uh, to the right. It, it will hit the chassis. So <clears throat> that's how that ends up working out with that. So, I did manage to find a workaround, and I do now have it brushless. Now, things I've added to this truck since I've purchased it is I bought the oil-filled dampers all around, which I would have to say, if you buy this truck, um, that would be your very first upgrade for this vehicle. Hands down, the very first is change the pogo stick shocks that are not fluid-filled, or anything to a fluid oil filled shock like these. I mean, you can see when you drop it, it doesn't bounce, it just plants. <clears throat> um, next thing we did is we put the wheelie bar on it. That is also a red cat, uh, a red cat part. These all, all these parts, other than the electronics, are available from red cat. Um, the Savox servo I bought from my local hobby shop. The Spectrum receiver I bought from my local hobby shop, but I had one of them laying around, and I bought the Dynamite speed control system from my local hobby shop as well. Okay, the next thing, you probably aren't going to see it very well. I upgraded the entire drivetrain in this car. I am now officially running metal uh, diff internal gears, uh, metal ring gears, metal pinion gears on both the front and the rear. So all the drive line now is officially a uh, metal drive line. <clears throat> now, one thing to bear in mind, uh, you're gonna find as well that the motor, this motor uses a two millimeter uh, shaft for the pinion gear. Uh, the stock pinion gear that comes on this I believe is a two and a half millimeter uh, size pinion, two and a half or 2.3, something like that. So <clears throat> what I did temporarily to, to more or less rig this is I took a piece of tape, cut it, wrapped it around the shaft and was able to slide the pinion on and lock it on. It's not the most uh, effective way of doing it, but just to get the truck running uh, and, and whatnot, that, that did the trick for now. I plan on getting online here and, and seeing about pinions for this. Um, one thing I can say is that this truck does not use your standard 32 or 48 pitch gears. Um, I did take a 48 pitch pinion uh, for my 1 10th scale stuff 
and uh, used it along the uh, the plastic spur gear to see about the mesh. And the teeth are larger, uh, a little larger than 48. So I'm thinking that they're either a, uh, well, like to me, a 48 pitch metric, or there it might be the same uh, 0.5 module. Uh, so I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to take a look through some of my stuff. I think I've got a couple of Tamiya opinions laying around. I can verify that information or, or whatnot. Um, so anyway, back to the additional upgrades. Um, on the front, on the rear here, on the front here, I put in the, when I had the diffs out, I also put in the metal output cups off the diff and the CVD style uh, knuckles or for the, for the knuckles there on the axle. Uh, so I did that on the front, and now we're going to move to the rear. I did the same thing on the rear, but the metal outdrive cups, the metal dog bones, and uh, axles. Now, I don't know if this is a problem related to Red Cat specifically, if they know this is an issue or not, but when it comes to this dog bone here, this dog bone is actually about one and a half millimeters about too long because what I had to do is inside there where the dog bone goes into the cup for the axle, uh, what happens is, is that it binds on suspension compression when you go up and down at the suspension. And it causes the drive line to bind and chatter and make all kinds of racket or jam up. <clears throat> because the the length of between the two change a little bit, causing it to do that. Uh, so what I did is I took the dog bone, put it into the drive, and I measured the pin. I see you're not going to get a good photo of it. There you go. I measured where the pin is and where where the where the dog bone bottoms out inside the cup. And I, and I met Mike that out, and I found out that I, it's about 1.5 millimeters before the bone, the, the, the ends of the bone, or the, the, the cross piece there, uh, where it slides in to the slots, uh, before it bottoms out. So what I did is I drilled out that uh, where it goes into the, the, the cup there in the center. I drilled that out with a drill bit, um, Lord help me, I can't remember the size, but uh, I drilled that out about another 1.5 millimeters in on either side, and that seems to correct that problem of it uh, jamming up and binding. It will chatter just a little bit, but it's it's it, the suspension works just like it's supposed to now. It don't stop at a certain point because it binds up and everything else. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. If you're going to do the upgrades to this truck, you will have to right there. See that pin. You will have to drill, uh, that shaft out in the end here where it goes into the, the cup. So that pin can bottom out. Where's it at here? So that pin can bottom out in there. Like I said, it's only about one and a half millimeters. And like I said, now the suspension completely compresses and it spins pretty much freely now with no issues. And the dog bone, it's going to be hard to show you because I'm trying to do this one-handed, but the dog bone here, if you look, see it, it does slide back and forth uh, a little bit. So it has some room to move now, which it didn't have before. You will encounter that problem. Now, I have not tried the CB axles from the front to see if they would work on the rear. That I have not done, um, just to give you a heads up. But just to prove to you that this is working, this is legit, this is not a joke, I'm going to see if I can plug this in one-handed here. Yeah, two-handed. So I can get this Dean's plugged in. There you go. And we'll turn the switch on. Okay. 
Okay, you see that? Um, let me see, do I have something I can set it up on here? Here's a, here's a pot for a plant or something. All right, here we go. You ready? There you go. No joke. Like I said. And it all works. And to top it off, you can hear the servo working. So, just in case anybody says, well, you can't make these brushless, um, there's a couple of YouTubers, um, including myself, and yes, you can. The hardest part of doing it is finding a workaround for that old five wire servo. That old, that I don't even know why they went that route in the first place. That was just stupid. But that was because this truck is um, basically a copy of the high boxing 16889. Um, that's pretty much what Red Cat went with. So, you know, Red Cat is, is, uh, is pretty common for them for time to time to take somebody else's. Uh, Chinese version vehicle and uh, rebrand it for their stuff. And Red Cat copied, took the whole copy of everything. They said, okay, we're just going to go ahead and across the, across the plane here and we're just going to copy the whole damn thing. So that's that. So yes, you can make it brushless. It's going to cost you some money to make them brushless. That's for sure. It's not going to be cheap unless you've got the small electronics laying around to uh, to do it. So anyway, I just wanted to give a review on doing the brushless on these the right way. Um, there's no hacking and whacking on this. That's for sure. This is this is straight up the right way of doing it. The drivetrain is all beefed up for it. Uh, I did look at lower kilovolt systems um, from 6,000 as well. And, uh, you know, it was either go with the cheap stuff that you, you could get, uh, like on Amazon or eBay, or spend the money and go with the two-in-one dynamite system, which, like I said, that's why I decided to go with it, because it just cleaned up the whole installation look. Now it's just a matter of me tidying up the wires. But um, that was why I went that route with this. I didn't want to spend that kind of money on it. But you know what? I hang on to my cars for quite a while. And I do play with them and have some fun with them from time to time. And matter of fact, um, I took this out. I was camping. And I took this out with me to go camping. And I uh, was bashing it around the campground there a little bit. And it was uh, it was fun for having the little 390 in it. Uh, but now that, now that I got that big... Uh, that that six thousand kV brushless. Now this thing's <laughs> she's really gonna go. Um, one last thing I do want to mention is the tires. The tires are not a soft tire. They are a harder tire, harder compound. Um, they I wouldn't say they're quite plasticky, but they definitely aren't as rubbery as you would expect for a race rubber like a Proline. Uh, or J Concepts, or an AKA, or uh, you know, um, I've had ready to runs that come out of the box with a softer rubber tire than these. But you know what? It's it's a 16 scale truck. Um, it is what it is. It's a hobby. We're all here to have fun with it, and educate, and teach, and do what we can to help one another. So I'm hoping that my video here on the Volcano 16 uh, was informative and helpful to anybody that um anybody that uh is considering doing this um and one last thing i do want to mention that this truck the way it is set up you can go only to a 13 or 14 tooth pinion on this truck there's a little plastic adapter piece that screws onto the motor and then that slides the motor slides into the chassis uh that's your only adjustments that you can make you you either fit it you either fit it one way or you turn it around and fit it in the other way. Um, so that is, uh, and what you see here is pretty much the extent of the upgrades you're going to be able to do to this thing. Um, I did measure out the bearings as well. Uh, the bearings, they, they give you an oddball metric size. And I mic'd out those bearings and did the conversion and found out that the bearings are actually an imperial standard size bearing. And 
for the life of me, I I don't have that information in front of me. It, it's on my notepad actually at work. I wrote all the numbers down there, and I could have given you the actual numbers for that um, if you ever wanted to replace the bearings. But the for the amount of money they they charge you for the bearing set for these from Red Cat, I mean, you're probably cheaper off going that route because I mean, if I go through like uh, shameless plug, uh, if I go through like Avid RC, I'm gonna still get hit for a dollar a bearing where I think you get like the eight bearings for like six bucks. So you're getting them for less than a buck a bearing. Um, oh, and one other thing. When you change out those axles and everything too, uh, you change from that stupid screw with the serrated head to an actual uh, flange nut, a five mil flange nut instead of a four mil hex, uh, four mil hexed head serrated screw, coarse threaded screw. So it's a it, it makes the vehicle more... RC hobby grade per se, I guess you could call it. Um, so there you go. That is my Volcano 16, and I will be looking into that pinion and spur gear deal and trying to get uh, get two pinions available for it. Uh, I'll go to probably Robinson Racing for those once I get that figured out. But other than that, um, that's the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you're looking to do the brushless system uh, right, uh, I would say look for a servo like that Savox 1250MG. Uh, look for a servo about that same identical size. Um, it is a little thickness wise, it's a little taller than the original five wire, but it uh, still does fit. You just gotta, you're gonna have to do a little cutting, a little trimming. It's not that bad if you just do a little at a time and you'll get it all to fit and uh, you'll get it all to work. So there you go, YouTube. And again, I want to thank anybody uh, that subscribes and future subscribers, past subscribers. And again, I want to thank, uh, I want to tell everybody, hey, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, Feliz Navidad. And I know 2020 has been a crazy year, but uh, there you go. There's this one. And um, for my next video, I'm hoping I can probably get a video up of my Team Lozy Mini B. I have one of those too. Uh, so hopefully I can share that with you guys soon. So, all right. Thank you much. Have a good day.